thank you. Thank the organizer for inviting me to this conference. The cruise trip for me is the first time in my life. <laughs> Therefore, we really enjoy it. But come back to the topic I'm going to present. We have three keywords, as you can see here. The first keyword is the meta material. Second one is the vibration isolation. Third one is engineering. What I'm talking is we are trying to use metal material for vibration isolation. Of course, vibration isolation we will apply to the all kinds of engineering materials, including engineering structures. First, I would like to acknowledge all the international, national collaborators. This project basically funded by National Science Foundation and Department of Energy. And all those are my collaborators, including UT, Professor Stokey, and uh, UIUC, Professor Hach Hach, Lehi, Professor Sose, and Tsinghua University, National Taiwan University, and all those are my collab collaborators for this project. Today, I would first introduce what is metamaterial, and then why we propose to use metamaterial. And I will show you the theory of metamaterials. From the theory, we will obtain what we really need from engineering point of view. And for design purpose, we will go by so-called global sensitivity analysis. From this analytical result, we will obtain a set of design guidelines. And then we use the guidelines for 1D and 3D periodic material-based seismic isolation system. After we did the design, actually the design we did uh, basically requested by Department of Energy. I did the design for the real prototype, nuclear power plant, and especially the reason why is a small modular reactor, small modular reactor. And after we did the design, we have to validate, we have to validate. We use shake cable, shake cable. Of course, shake cable is not too big. We have to scale down. After we did the shake cable test, we tried to use finite element simulation to see if we can really use an analytical model to simulate what we developed, the metal materials. If we can, so from now on, we don't have to do all the repeating uh, test to validate all the program, we just use final element stimulation from now on for our periodic meta material based foundation for seismic isolation or even vibration isolation, including the MRI, the medical facility, the foundation. We want to isolate the vibration, all those we can apply. That's the key. Okay, now quickly show you what problem we have in engineering structures. As all of you may know already, just for example, during earthquake, we have all kinds of damages. And the conventional isolation system, as you can see right here, the major problem is no isolation in vertical direction, conventional. And in addition, con conventional isolation system, they also is prone to rocking. To rocking. If you use conventional, it will be give you a rocket. So the metal material I'm going to propose can prevent this problem. Okay, we don't have rocking. I will show you. We did test to prove. And also we can isolate the vertical direction vibration. Now I want to introduce what is metal material. 
metamaterial basically come from solid state physics researchers. At the beginning, they call it phononic crystals, phononic crystals. And then later applied to engineering, first to mechanical engineering, and then I'm a civil engineer. I got this concept from the, a paper published in Nature. And then I, I thought, hey, this concept, we should be able to apply to earthquake engineering. Therefore, I use it for seismic isolation of all kinds of engineering structures. As all of you know, all the structures in the seismic region will have to do seismic design. How we do it, I propose to use metamaterials. And now the key point is what is metamaterial? Metamaterial is not a, is a material engineer to have a property that is not found in nature. But they are made from assembly of multiple elements. Multiple elements. For example, in my group, I use rubber and the concrete. Rubber is one layer, concrete is one layer to make one unit cell. And then we repeat the unit cell. Repeat the unit cell. What I'm saying, the metal materials, the property not come from the, the concrete itself, not come from the rubber itself, but from, I design, concrete and rubber become one unit cell. And then I repeat the unit cell. Repeat the unit cell. As you can see right here, repeating pattern. And then their shape, geometry, size, orientation, and arrangement will give their smart properties. These properties will manipulate elastic waves, including mechanics wave, seismic waves, to block the waves. What we are talking is, after we design the metal materials, if the frequency of the incoming wave is located in a very unique characteristic of the metal materials I just designed. Okay, that we call frequency band gap. The incoming frequency is located in the frequency band gap. The incoming waves will be reflected back. Will be reflected back. This is the most important characteristic. And then you can see from Geometry, we have 1D periodic metal material, 2D and 3D. 1D, as you can see right here, this is one unit cell. For example, this is rubber concrete, rubber concrete. One unit cell, we repeat the unit cell in one direction, it's 1D. This is another case, it's one unit cell. We repeat the unit cell in X and Y direction, it's 2 dimensional metal material. And then 3D will repeat the unit cell in all X, Y, Z direction. No matter how, based on our design, we will be able to obtain frequency band gap. For example, this one, the frequency band gap is about 18 to 24.5, just, just for example. And then now, I want to show you, this is the metal material I designed. And then this one will show you the incoming wave with a frequency located in the frequency band gap. Therefore, based on what I just said, this wave will be reflected back. In contrast, if the incoming wave frequency is outside the frequency band gap, it will be passing through, passing through. Therefore, we use this characteristic so-called frequency band gap. As our foundation, at the top, we have our superstructures, like machine or medical facilities or buildings or bridges. For me, nuclear power plants, for example. Now, let me show you the video. I hope it will work. <laughs> it doesn't work with this computer. Maybe I will find time to show you. This is the most important slide, actually, in all my presentation. 
the the incoming wave coming to here, and then it will be reflected back. This one was passing through, as you can see right here for seismic disturbance, the frequency is about 0.1 hertz to 50 hertz, ultra low frequency. In contrast, heat insulation, they are talking about terahertz. Mechanical vibration, somewhere here, okay, 50, 80, up to 700 frequency. So what I'm thinking, just like yesterday, several speakers already mentioned, this is a multi-international collaboration project. I do encourage all kinds of people try to find frequency band gap, okay, from this frequency spectrum. I'm an earthquake engineer. I focus on this one. For heat insulation researcher, they may focus on this one. Mechanical engineers may focus on this one. And then we can continue all different fields. The frequency is different. Now I want to show you some preliminary study. As you just saw it, 1D, 2D, and 3D periodic foundation. That means periodic matter material based foundation. We did the shake table test. Shake table test. This is my 1D periodic foundation. At the top, we have a steel frame. This is a steel frame, exactly the same, attached to the check table. As you can see, at the top of the vibration for specimen A, is black dash, the curve. In contrast, at the top of a specimen B, supported by a 1D periodic foundation, the vibration almost equal to zero represented by the red curve, by the red curve. This is for 2D. This is shake table test. After I did this one, Department of Energy asked me, hey, shake table test, proof good. But how about reality? Can you proof in the free field? I say, okay, let's do it. Free field, I use UT Austin's free field vibrator. Okay, they put in the truck. This is a 2D periodic foundation. As you can see, this is a one unit cell. We repeat the unit cell in this direction, three unit cell. This direction, eight unit cells. And this is a steel frame. Steel frame sit on a reinforced concrete foundation. This one also reinforced concrete foundation supporting 2D periodic foundation. And at the top, we have steel frame. At the top, as you can see, the vibration is a red curve. For 2D period foundation, the vibration reduction is about 50%. This one almost 100%. Take a look, 3D period foundation. This is a 3D period foundation. I just take a strip right here, take a strip out. And this is a reinforced concrete foundation. You can see again the vibration for 3D period foundation. It's fantastic, fantastic. This is a feasibility study. Now I want to show you the theory of metal material. From the wave equation, we can actually use finite element. Okay, finite element method to find dispersion curve. From the dispersion relationship, we will be able to find frequency band gap. How? This is a wave equation. We use periodic boundary foundation, apply this one to this equation, and then we get eigenvalue equation. We solve this equation we get a frequency band gap. This is a basic concept. And then here, this is a 1D metal materials. We even consider, after we did the foundation design, we consider the superstructure as one layer of the periodic materials. As you can see right here, at the top, the roof of the superstructures. The FRF, curve look like this one. What is FRF? As you can see right here. Frequency response function, FRF. That is defined as 20 log data out divided by data in. Data in means the button input. Data out means the top vibration response. 
If data out divided by data in equal to 10%, that means 0.1, this FRF will be equal to minus 20. As you can see right here, FRF if minus 20 should be somewhere here. If we have minus 20, the vibration already reduced to 10%. The vibration is 90% reduction as you can see right here for this case frequency from 0 to 50 for earthquake engineering the seismic waves frequency about 0.1 up to 20 hertz normally sometimes higher maybe 30 hertz very seldom but we can cover from 0 to 50 hertz as you can see minus 20 somewhere here see all those the vibration reduction 90 percent 90 percent this is how we designed for the 3d okay using the theory i just presented to you we also find the frequency band gap and now we want to do design using this concept we go by the so-called global sensitivity analysis using sobo sobo method from the Sobo method, as you can see, any function f can be expressed by many terms. The first term as an individual variable. Second term, consider the interaction of two variables. Third term, interaction of three variables continue coming down. And then you can get all those functions. This is from Sobo, okay? Sobo method. Well-known method in mechanics. And then we'll calculate the Sobo variance D. And then calculate the Sobo sensitivity indices. Total add up equal to what? From this analysis, for our case, the materials we used with the property, we try to find the frequency band gap, the beginning frequency and the width of the frequency band gap. As you can see right here, starting frequency, what we found, the most important variable, is the density ratio of the two ingredients we used. Okay, and this is the most important. The effect is largest, just for example. And those are the second important, second important. This is starting frequency, this is the width, because we want to have frequency band gaps as wide as possible to cover zero to, to 50 hertz, for example. For this one, as you can see also, the width will be affected by the height ratio of the two materials. This one. And then another variables, as you can see right here, is the density, okay, interaction right here. Now I come to the real small module reactor building design. This is this building contains 12 nuclear reactors. What we see is six. One, two, three, up to here, six. As you can see, we, this one we cut from the middle line. Huh? Total we have six. The entire building, the length is about 95 meters. 95 meters, width 40 meters and the high is also about 40 meters. We did our design, as you can see, this is our 1D PRO foundation. We found the frequency band gap, and as you can see, the yellow region is frequency band gap. And then we also consider the superstructure, nuclear and small module reactor buildings as an equivalent layer. So we get the frequency band gap even better, even wider, and lower. And we did the model analysis for the entire building, including the 1D periodic foundation. 1D periodic foundation. Mode 1, 2, 3. And then, this one shows the frequency response function, FRF. As you can see, FRF minus, minus 20 somewhere here. A while ago, I already mentioned, if we obtain minus 20, the reduction already 90%, 90%.
as you can see, for S wave and P wave, minus 20 somewhere here. So we can cover a very large range of frequency. And for P wave, similar, minus 20 somewhere here. See? And we know it's quite successful. And this is a 3D period foundation. Mode analysis for 3D. We also did the, the entire structure system analysis, FRF for S wave and P wave, minus 20 somewhere here. Somewhere here. The lower curve stands for the roof vibration, actually. And then we need to do the validation. We use shake table for our dynamic testing, shake table. Everybody knows, not too big, but what I use already pretty big, actually. Five meter by five meter. Scale five meter compared with 95 meter, we still have to scale down. The scale is about 22 scale. We follow the similitude, uh, similitude requirement for dynamic testing, as you can see right here. Just for example, the frequency scale become this one. The frequency band gap scale will become square root 22, square root 22. And then, this is the small module reactor building design using finite element model. This is a prototype. After we scale, after we scale, our scaled specimen should have the natural frequency, 31, when compared with the prototype, 6.8 hertz. This is our design for full scale. This is a full scale. This is a scale down result. How about your rector building design using fine element model? This is a prototype. After we scale, after we scale, our scaled specimen should have the natural frequency 31 when compared with the prototype 6.8 hertz. This is our design for full scale. This is a full scale. This is a scale down result. And then this shows the frequency band gap, as you can see right here. This is the 1D periodic foundation uh, for the shake table test. This is a 3D design. Frequency band gap we obtained. Also, uh, we did the structural system analysis. All those, we just follow the dynamic model, dynamic model, for our scale, the specimen. Those are fabrication of the test, the specimen, up to here, this is the foundation, 1D period foundation. And those are 3D periodic foundation. As you can see, this is 1D period foundation, 3D period foundation. This is a conventional reinforced concrete foundation. At the top, we put our scale, uh, small module rector building at the top. So we have six cases, six cases. Due to the time restraint, those I will not report. I will report to you only the structure system, case two, four, and six. This one with reinforced concrete foundation. This is a 1D period foundation. This is a 3D period foundation. This is the test we performed. This is a test setup, as you can see, shake table, five meter by five meter. This is my pure foundation, 1D pure foundation. This is four meter. This is 2.2 meters. This is the scale building. Those are the sensor locations. Sensor locations. We measure some acceleration, some displacement, all those are sensor location. Now, I want to show you the frequency sweeping test. As you can see, those are the frequency in the x-axis and uh, in the y-axis as the FRF, FRF. Case two, four, and six. All case two is with reinforced concrete foundation, conventional structures. This is a 1D period foundation. 
This is 3D Pure Foundations. As you can see, FRF minus 20 somewhere here. See, it will be working very well in horizontal direction, vertical direction, and torsional mode. This shows the acceleration response in horizontal direction will input the B-sharp earthquake. B-sharp earthquake. RC foundation, as you can see, the red curve amplified, the response amplified. For 1D and 3D pure foundations, the vibration reduced so much, see, represented by the red curves. Another seismograph, oral view, we got the similar result. And then the other two seismograms, the reduction also a lot, but it's not that good like this one. What like this two seismogram? The reason we found because we do have some for this two seismic disturbance, we do have some frequency outside the frequency bank gap. Therefore, the reduction is is good, but not so much like this one. This one, what we found the the seismic waves. The frequency compared to located in the frequency band gap. And then, rocking. At the beginning, I say metal material can also prevent rocking. We did the test. Okay, this is the result. As you can see, conventional isolate, isolation system, they do have rocking. They have to experience design something to prevent rocking. And based on their test result, they find 2.1 times 10 to the power 4 radian. They call it no more rocking. But based on our measurement for case 2 and this, uh, case 4 and case 6, the measurement is 0 0.3, about 0 0.3 times 10 to the power of minus 4. Much, much smaller than this one. This is 2.1. Therefore, we know we don't have rocking. And this shows seismo, seismic Okay, input, uh, the harmonic input, the red curve representing the response become much smaller. And the following is the finite element simulation. We did the simulation, we found that simulated result and test result, they are very close. They are very close, as you can see. So, based on what I just say, as you can see right here, we can make the following a lot of conclusions, but I believe all of you can also make the same conclusion. The first one, as you can see, the theoretical study shows properly designed periodic metal material are very effective in blocking the propagation of elastic waves. And also guided by global sensitivity analysis, we have a simple design equations for design and then we did 1D and 3D pure foundations, including design and analysis, and also the test to validate the result. And uh, most important is the incoming seismic waves having frequencies falling inside the frequency band gap are filled out by the pure foundations. That's the key. The pure foundations are capable of isolating the incoming waves in both horizontal and vertical, as well as the torsional mode. The rocking has been prevented, and final simulation did a very good job. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>